again. Um, in this video, I want to talk about problem definition. Problem definition is the first step in policy analysis and the first step in program planning. Most authors in these disciplines agree that problem definition is also the most important step in policy analysis and program planning. So in this video, I want to talk about uh, why we begin with problem definition and why this step is uh, so important in the development of policies or uh, in program uh, planning. So there are two reasons why uh, we start with pro problem definition and why it is so important. The first one is technical, technical reason, technical logical reason, and the second one is uh, social and political. Uh, so let's talk about those, those those two reasons. Let's start with the technical and logical reason. Um, and to do that, let's imagine, um, or let's start from the premise, let's say, that um, any policies that we implement or any program that we plan or any intervention that we uh, put in place, or even every task that we do for a, for a program or a project, we do it for social betterment. That the overarching goal of our of what we overarching goal of what we do in government or the nonprofit sector is social betterment. We want the world to be a better place, right? So uh, the reason for every policy program or intervention is to make things better for someone. Now. How do we do this? So uh, first we need to conceive what is better, right? Uh, we need to imagine what is better. And the way we do that is we think of a perfect state. We all have this vision or idea of how society should be structured and what are the minimum uh, needs that maybe might be, uh, have to be met for individuals in our communities, right? This is how things uh, should be or how we think uh, uh, how we think things should be. And then we look at the world, at the current state, and we see how things are. And then we compare the two, and we might find a gap there. We might find that there is a big gap um, from where we are to where we should be. right? And this gap represents a room for improvement. If we want things to be to get better, Right from this state, if we want this state to be get closer to what we wish it would be, right? This gap represents a room for improvement, but not only room for improvement, also it represents a need for action. So we see, oh, we can act here and to bring things from the current state to the ideal state, to the perfect state. And this need for action represents a uh, a question about a solution, right? So what action do we put in place? What is the solution that we need to put in place in order to bring this current state to the ideal state? What is the solution? And then when we start thinking about solutions and actions that need to be in place, then this gap, this room for improvement becomes a problem, right? A problem that needs to be solved through some action, right? bringing the state from where it should be to where we wish it was is our problem and we, if we do something we may be able to solve it we may be able to, to 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 bring these two states closer right now these actions and these solutions that we're talking about if we are going to find them we first need to understand the problem we need to understand this gap right so this gap that we uh, uh, or, or uh, room for improvement becomes a problem if we're looking for a solution that means that we're trying to solve a problem and if we're looking to solve a problem then we first need to understand the problem what the problem is so this gap becomes a problem and before we find solutions we need to understand the nature of the problem we need to understand how big the problem is we need to understand what the consequences of the problem are and we need to understand most importantly what is causing the problem right 
and only when we have this this understanding of the problem can we start thinking about solutions right if we understand why we have this gap then we need we, then we can fix it right now that is the logical and technical reason and it seems you know kind of obvious right in order to find a solution to anything we first need to understand the problem and um, you know the greatest minds of all time have always understood this um, for example uh, Charles Kettering, an American inventor, uh, or some people attribute this, this phrase to John Dewey, an American philosopher, very influential in the first half of the 20th century. He said, a problem well stated is half solved. Right? Referring to how important it is to really state the problem correctly. You cannot solve it without stating it correctly. And if you state it correctly, you have it pretty much solved. Albert Einstein, one of the greatest minds of all time, he said, if I only had one hour to solve a problem, I would spend 55 minutes of that hour defining the problem and the remaining five minutes solving it. Right? This phrase is attributed to, uh, to Albert Einstein um, and it denotes how important, right, 55 minutes out of the hour he would have used defining the problem. That's how important defining the problem is. But you don't need to be Albert Einstein to understand this, right? That if you don't understand a problem, you cannot solve it. You will not solve it, right? Um, if you have taken a math test <laughs> and you see a problem that you don't understand, there is no way you're going to solve it, right? You need to understand the problem before you go out um, and solve it. So that is the technical, logical reason why problem definition is so important and why it is the first step in program planning and policy um, analysis. But there is also a second reason. There is the social and political reason. And that means that um, if we want support or buy-in for a solution that we like, uh, we need to be able to explain its value in terms of the problem it is solving. Right? The value of a program or policy is determined by the perception people have about its capacity to solve the problem. If a policy or program does not solve a problem <laughs> that people understand or uh, uh, care about, then it will have no value to them. It will have no support. Right? Think about that for a second. Right? People will only accept and support vaccination programs if they understand and care about the problem of the disease they prevent. If they don't care or understand the problem of the disease they prevent, then they will not accept or support the vaccination program. Right? People will accept or support education programs only if they understand and care about the problem of an uneducated society. People will only accept and support nutrition programs if they understand and care about the problem of malnutrition, right? Hunger, obesity, etc. If people will support a solution, they need, they need to understand the problem. Now, uh, in the public's mind, the value of a program is, of course, directly related or linked to the perceptions of how well a program is solving this perceived problem. But this is not only at the public uh, level, it also happens at the individual level, right? Pretty much the value of uh, many products is determined by uh, how well they solve the problem. If you have something that doesn't solve any problem, then it probably has no value to you, right? And marketing and salespeople know this. It's sales 101, right? Um, so consider the example, for example, uh, 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 of a car's salesman or woman, right? When you go to buy a car and that saleswoman or, or a salesman walks up to you, they have one goal. That goal is for you to drive out on a car that they've sold you. But they are not going to sell you a car. They're not going to sell you just a machine. They're going to sell you a solution to your problems. 
that's what you will buy. You will not buy a machine. You will buy a solution to your problems. So they will sell you the car in terms of how well it is solving a problem for you. For example, they will say you, sell you a car uh, as a solution to the problem of unreliable transportation you have right now. Or they will sell you the car as a solution to the dangerous situations you're putting your children in or under by driving this old car of yours. Or they will send you a, sell you a solution to the problem of uh, how bad you look driving that old van, right? In my case. So they sell a solution, right, to your problem. Same in policy or program plan, right? Same principle applies. People will buy your a, a, a program or a policy, will buy into it if they care about the problem they are it is solving for them, right? And the better you define the problem, the better chance people will uh, support the policy this, 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 uh, this um, program or policy is solving. So um, that is why uh, pr a problem definition is so important and is the first step for one technical reason, that if you do not, do not understand the problem, you are never going to solve it. And two, for a political social um, reason that if people do not understand or care about a problem, they're not going to support a solution, right? Now, I hope I, I have convinced you of why problem definition is so important and why it is the first step in program planning or policy uh, analysis. Um, in the next videos, we will talk about uh, some of the steps and some uh, tips uh, you will use to actually define uh, a problem for your policy analysis or program plan. I will see you in the next video and thank you for watching.